Hey friends, my name is Emily and you are listening to the Oh, I'm Lonely podcast. This is my podcast where I unpack all the big feelings I have that usually boil down to loneliness and disconnection from various aspects of my life, from career, communities, loved ones, or sometimes just being plain old alone. This is where we talk about all the different places loneliness creeps its sweet baby self into and I try to understand what story the loneliness is trying to tell me. So please, join me, because even though it's lonely here, you aren't alone. Hi friends, Um, before we jump into the episode, I just wanna give a little update. Um, We, as in Mickey and I, our guests today, recorded this in I wanna say January. Um, Hi, I'm working on my consistency, jump off. Believe me, this entire conversation is still so extremely relevant and it is universally, at least in our industry, understood that swings are so important. And to hear Mickey's firsthand account on what it's like to be a swing for the first time, and not only as for the first time, but also going into a Broadway run, it's wild. And I'm so excited for you to hear her whole story and the loneliness that they experienced. But I also just wanted to update um, Number one, yes, we have seen each other in person. Uh, Mickey came to Wizard of Friendship and I got to see Mickey and Shucked. Saw Mickey play Lulu and oh my God, oh my God, if you see any of the videos of Mickey online, Mickey is incredible. I like, I bow down to you. Shucked has obviously come out. It was nominated for many Tonys. They performed at the Tonys. It was fabulous. I fangirled so hard Um, and I'm very, very proud of Mickey and everything that they are accomplishing in this show and i can't wait for you to hear this interview so enough from me let's get into the interview welcome back friends to the oh i'm lonely podcast today i am very very excited to have a still only internet and podcast friend we still (laughs) must meet up in person i feel like this is most of my guests so far it's like we still need to meet up (laughs) um (laughs) But they are very, very busy for wonderful reasons. So, um, and we'll learn all about that and and much more. Today, I am so pleased to have on Mickey Abraham. Thank you so much for coming on. Mickey, tell us a little bit about yourself and what makes you lonely today? (laughs) Yeah. um, So, um, like she said, my name is Mickey and I am um, an actor and a self-esteem coach for artists. Um, I from Kentucky. I'm a Midwestern (laughs) country gal. Um, And yeah, and I, you know, what makes me lonely? It's so funny because when we were talking about this podcast, when you first approached me about it, I was like, lonely. And I was like, I don't know if I've really like been lonely lately. Mm. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And then I left to do the most recent contract that I, that I'm doing. And I remember I kept talking to my therapist and I kept using that word. I was like, I'm just, I'm lonely. It's just, I am lonely. And then today I was like, Oh, I know, I know what I'm going to talk about. Um, I, yeah, I, so I'm right now I'm, uh, I'm opening a <laughs> Lindsay Pierce just text me, LOL. How funny. Girl. Um, <laughs> Hey girl. <laughs> I love that. Hey, hey girl. Um, no, so, so it's so, it's so funny because so I'm in the middle of a, a contract right now. I am the new Broadway show shucked, uh, that is going to be at the Nederlander theater in spring of 2023. Oh, hell yeah. Um, Nederlander. Well, we, Come on big space. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we start rehearsals, uh, January 30th. So whatever you're listening to this, um, that is probably what I will be doing when you're listening to this, <laughs> um, awesome. po- podcast, but yeah, so I was doing uh, the pre-Broadway run in Utah, and um, I, <laughs> I've never been a swing before, so I'm swinging the show. Never been a swing before, um, I, which I think is wild. Um, I'm 31 years old. <laughs> I've been in the industry for a long time, and I've only understudied in like two contracts. Like I, I just don't have a whole lot of experience swinging, understudying, and um, I just found myself because there's only one other swing in the well. There'll be more on Broadway, but in Utah, it was just me, one other swing. And I, (laughs) it it was a man and he was on the other side of the theater in his dressing room. And I was in my dressing room and I just kept finding these moments where it was so abnormal to me, number one, to not be on stage Mm -hmm. because I've, I've 
been an offstage cast member before. And so I was like, okay, so like this, this is, it feels weird to me, like coming into the world of the show, like, who am I? How do I know these other people? Like, I've not established my, my footing yeah. in the world of the show. And also I would just find myself like sitting in the dressing room for like two hours, two and a half hours, just literally, quite literally by myself, yeah. but also feeling lonely because there was, I didn't have like a swing person to be with. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of like, all right, so I'm here. I'm, I'm alone. I don't have anyone to talk to. Um, I'm not in the show. So there are inside jokes that are happening during tech or whatever. And oh, I'm not a part of it. Yeah. And I was just like, and I've never, I've never felt that before. And it, and the thing is, is it feels shitty to complain about mm. <laughs> because it's like, you know, like I call my friends and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm this, I'm like, I'm, I'm lonely. And they're just like, oh, you're lonely being a swing in an original Broadway show. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. You're, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, everything's relative yeah. to what people are going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's like one of those things where you like, you dream, you want to do it. I, I absolutely, I love being a swing. I love being a part of it and like experiencing it for the first time. And it's definitely not something that I'm like, oh, hate this, never want to do it again. It's yeah. not that, but it's also just like, I'm alone, I'm lonely, yeah. like just sitting. And yeah, so that was like, I think that's like the most recent, most like poignant thing for that sure. I'm just like lonely. Yeah, just that, lonely. It's <laughs> you saying that, I feel like I wrote that down as like an idea for like, oh, that would be a good thing to do a podcast episode. I'm so happy you brought it because number one, I feel like swings, understudies, standbys are only just, it's like people are like, oh my gosh, we have these, this other element of the stage that are saving the day. It's like, no, they've always been there. They just haven't gotten enough appreciation. And um, I've never done it. So like whenever I think about it, I'm like, I've, I've, I've swung like in shows where I'm already in and like picking up things from tracks right. on cruise ships um, to which both of us know it well. And it's like, <laughs> yes, a little too well. And, um, <laughs> and, and so like, but the idea of taking on the, the element of the entire show is yeah. just daunting. It just seems so daunting. And if you're not, especially in when you were doing it in Utah and you're the only one doing it, you're not like alternating with another person or two, like, like yeah. six or something like that. I, I mean, yeah. absolutely. That is because you're in your mind the whole time being like, okay, I have to go to two and then I would go to three here. And like, you're not even on the stage to see where you're doing it. Like, hell yeah. yeah. That's lonely. Hell yeah. <laughs> validate it. I validate you. Thank you so much thank you thank you it's it's also you know because my other my other you know I guess my my swing bro um <laughs> is lovely he's 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 been a swing in like literally everything like Broadway career up wazoo right yeah. like shout out Alan Wiggins um Got he's it. lovely but he was also he's also the dance captain okay. so he so even if he's like not on He's also busy doing so many other things. Right. And then I'm just sitting there like, hmm, <laughs> like I'm just watching. And it's like also being a swing is difficult during rehearsals as well, because you quite literally aren't doing anything. Like yeah. during rehearsals as a swing, you're just sitting there and you're watching, but you can't really learn anything because it's rehearsal. So mm -hmm. everything is shifting. No one has locked anything in. And you're just like, I hope that no one gets pulled for a costume fitting because then I'm gonna have to just fake it till I make it to this thing that they're doing. And it's just, it's just, it's so, it's so interesting. And I think there's something specific about this situation that differs because, you know, my, my fiance is in Into the Woods right now and they have a whole, their whole Instagram, their swing team. They have the, it takes, it takes nine, I think mm -hmm. is like their whole, the handle they're, they're they have like a whole group, right? Yeah. They have like a whole group of their, their studies and we will have so many more swings. Like once we move to Broadway, but in Utah, because it was just me. You were holding down Ellen, that for it. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, like, I wish that I could just like have a conversation with someone or like you get into like, you know how when you're in the dressing room, and someone else is down there and you, you're getting into these like deep conversations, you've known each other for like 
three weeks and you're like, we're best friends now. You're like, here's my blood type. Here's my social security. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're You're in my will. (laughs) Yeah. It's so funny how quick, how quick that happens. You're like, I didn't even know you existed three weeks ago, but now you're in my wedding. You're (laughs) in my, like, it's, it's wild. Um, but I would get into these moments where I'd like have these conversations and then they, they would be like, oh, I have to go on stage. And then they would like get up and go. And then I'd have a moment where I was like, and this is a new feeling because mm-hmm. I do not have to go on stage. And, yeah. and it was a lot yeah. of feeling like disconnected to myself because I've never been a swing before. Mm-hmm. And it was like, how do I... I had a whole thing where I like, I didn't, for some reason, this was so stupid. For some reason, I just didn't set up my, my dressing room station. Like I didn't set it up. And you, when I, when I say set it up, I mean like to a fault, people have made fun of me on tour when we've been in like split weeks and they're like, Mickey, we're literally only here for three days. Why are you putting up all of your pictures? Like what, like what is going on? And I'm like, well, I've always done this. Like I've always set up my stage. Like community theater, 10 year old me, I've always had like a, a whole thing. I love that. And Emily, for some reason, I just didn't do it in Utah. I just didn't. I walked in and I was like, okay, this is my station. And I just sat down and I was like, not understanding why I was, I was like, I feel terrible. Like, I, I don't feel like I fit into this cast. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's weird footing, you know? Yeah. And I talked to my therapist and she was like, well, maybe you should set up your station. <laughs> she was like, she was like, this is, just like you always do that yeah. why are you just deciding it's like if anyone else you know was going through this you would be like well you know a swing is no less than anyone else like yeah. you know you know all of these things and mm-hmm. she was like so literally you're just like setting yourself up for for sadness <laughs> yeah like, it's right. like the <laughs> easy like the easiest path is like sometimes the answer where my therapist said that to me once too I was I kept doing so I live on a duplex and upstairs we have a room that's kind of like a limbo room it's become like a workout self-tape room but like and it's our guest room but like I was having all my zooms up there when I was working at work from home on this other job and I'd had my therapy up there and it was just really sad there was nothing behind me it was just my blue screen and same thing I was just like I was just in my sads so much and yeah. my therapist went is this the only room that like we can have a session in or that you can do work in and I was like no, I've got, I was like, well, I've got like a plant room downstairs. I'm trying to like make a jungle. She's like, get your ass up and show me that room right now. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> okay. And then I showed her and she was like, she's like, Emily, that's a damn rainbow room. Get your gay ass in there. Do all your <laughs> shit from there. Yeah. I wish, you yeah. know what? She probably would say gay ass. I don't think she said it at the time, but I think Jamelia would tell me that because she knows me well and I'd be, <laughs> I'd respond. Jamelia, if you're listening, <laughs> I love you so much. God bless. Sometimes we need someone to tell us to get our gay asses in in a in a jungle. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the name of the t. Mean. That's the t-shirt. That's the t-shirt for this episode. Yeah, yeah. It's no, but it's it's so funny. It's like there. It's it's just this situation. Like it's just a new a new thing. And like yeah. obviously, when I booked this show, I, when I went in for the show, it was not to be a swing. It was to be a part of the ensemble. Mm-hmm. And um, then I, you know, things shifted the way that things shift. And right. they and they were like, okay, we're gonna offer you this swing track. And it was so interesting, because obviously when I heard that, I was just like, okay, great, whatever. Like, I love like love the material, love the show. 100% I will be a swing, like Broadway yeah, debut, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And and I was like, I've never done it before, but how funny to never have been a swing and then do it in a Broadway show. <laughs> like just just going to <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> to, to yeah. Um, but I just I look at it and I'm like, wow, there was just there's just so much about it that's just it's like uncomfortable because mm-hmm. it's new. It's like and and then the feeling of feeling lonely and not being able feeling like, you know you can't express it because I think that like, even if you do have, I mean, obviously I do have those supportive friends and I have my fiance that will listen and will be like, yes, heard. Yeah. I just, I think that there are moments where you feel like you can't express like negative feelings connected to accomplishments, like in the entertainment industry, Mm -hmm. because like somebody's gonna be like, 
well, at least you have this. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but <laughs> two things like, can exist at different... the same time. Yeah. Like two things can exist. You can be super happy and thankful and excited that you're opening a new show and then also be like, I'm also sad. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm also, it's also new, new things and new territory. So, yeah. Yeah. I find myself being on both sides of that when, like, especially when it's been a while since I've had like a steady um, stage gig. And I find myself being on that end. And then I'm like, Emily, they're, they're a full human being who's having a full human experience. Like get out of your own feelings yeah. and let them feel, especially at least the people I'm friends with. And I feel like that we commune with and, and put yeah. in our circles because we're like, no, we want good humans in our circles. Like those are not the people that are ever ungrateful for the opportunities or the jobs that, and are constantly like, I'm so grateful and I want the best for everyone, but life is fucking hard. And not only, <laughs> not only are you like, in this position where where you're literally the solitary swing doing all of this mental gymnastics in this show but it's also a brand new show it's constantly <laughs> like it could just be constantly shift like every I'm, i don't want to say it because i don't knock on wood i don't want that to happen to you but like there might be so many new changes i'm sure there will be when you move into a new space yeah uh, yeah when i tell you that we it was it was wild like the experience of like and it, it's funny i always say listen we, i always say that my, my college didn't teach me a lot of things which i feel like a lot of us at this point in our lives in our careers are like what did i learn oh my college is like under- roll around on the floor get yeah, dirty yeah yeah i always i always am like i didn't learn a lot but one thing that i did that i actually was recalling like during rehearsal um and i was it was so funny because i was like oh okay i will i will credit that to my university like good for them is we did a lot of new shows like a lot of new shows in college we had like an entire play festival for one semester where people would submit their work to be put on in full productions by like the seniors and it was very very cool and the writer would come in and we would like work on the show and they do rewrites and things like that so like I actually had quite a bit of experience working on new shows and like having to get new pages and learn things really quickly and and things like that. So that's one thing that during the like the rehearsal process in Utah for the show, I was like, oh, I'm actually not jarred by the fact that you're giving me like 17 new pages and we start tech in four days. Like, <laughs> like, OK, give it to me like. This, yeah. this was something that I that I actually was like, okay, all right, go off undergrad. Like that, that's <laughs> the one thing <laughs> that I'll give you. But, but yeah, I mean, we, gosh, putting on a new Broadway show is wild. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's wild <laughs> because it's just, it's new pages. It's, it's new, new songs, completely new songs, yeah. songs that, that were in one day that you spend an entire music rehearsal learning and the next day it's cut. And there's something else put in so uh, a verse from one song, a verse from another song put together into a brand new song. Like wow. it's wild. And, and I think that like, as a swing in that situation, you know, having to like, I, so I understudy Alex Newell um, mm-hmm. in the show and uh, <laughs> they had to leave to do something, some contract um, during tech. And so I had to jump in and tech like, that one of the principal roles yeah and it was wild because I was up there and like most of it I was like good because I knew it was coming so I was like prepping for it or whatever but most of it was good but then I'd get to a point where I was like oh everyone on this stage knows that this entire like monologue was cut because they were on stage when it was happening they were getting like the live feedback and I was like I was probably eating Cheez-Its in the top of the balcony not paying attention you know (laughs) so I'm just there it's that feeling of like being on stage looking around and being like okay everyone knows something I don't know yeah that sucks like is there something in my teeth is there something in my teeth yeah and I'm like I'm like that sucks it feels very high stakes and you're just kind of like you know so it's it's the the loneliness of of just like I mean I guess it's I guess this is like all kind of culminating and just like the loneliness of being like an offstage cover of being of being someone that's like not a part of it and it's also like 
Chucked is is based in a town. Like it's mm-hmm. quite literally a town called Cobb County. So something that feels weird is that like, I, I literally am like, well, I'm a stranger in this town. Mm-hmm. I do not know any of you. I don't know. Like, and so I start, I mean, obviously I make up these things and I'm like, you're the one who makes all the clothes and you're the one that does this. And I'm like creating, put, trying to put myself into this universe. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just like a weird thing. I, and I'm sure that they're doing everything in their power to like make you feel in it. But it's yeah. like, there is that element of like, there's only so much I can do for something that's kind of unspoken in a, in like inside jokes and the way we communicate and that's that's hard that's really hard yeah I feel and, and I, too. I yeah and I, I think like another another thing is just like the way that our our stage was set up um mm-hmm. at, at this particular theater is our our dressing rooms were so far apart like yeah. I literally the the girls dressing room or female identifying dressing room was on like stage right and then the male identifying dressing room was like stage left you had to like go under the stage to get there it was wild, That's wild. and so I, and so i would literally go entire days because i would leave before the show was over like last scene everyone's on stage if someone goes out there's nothing i can do yeah. and so i would like leave but you know before the show was over and sometimes i would go like full like days without seeing <laughs> anyone that wasn't in my dressing room wow. like and I was like pretty good friends with with a couple of the male identifying cast members and I would never see them like I would literally mm. wake up do my whole day in my home go to work they'd be in their dressing room I'd leave that was it and it was so strange because I was like I don't think I've ever done a contract where I've gone multiple days yeah. without seeing people like <laughs> like it was just yeah. it was so it was so strange and like feeling like yeah it's just it's just not it was just a thing of just feeling not only it's odd because you're off stage and you're not a part of whatever inside jokes the bonding whatever that's happening but it's also like the why why we do theater like the Mm -hmm. like the community Mm -hmm. and the connections and like if you're in a situation where you are far away from everybody else it's just like you are literally just like chilling in the basement in utah (laughs) and like do you That's... know if the Nederlander like has a space that like all of the un- all of the um off stage understudies and and swings will like and, be like, in the same space? Do you know? I I don't know. I know that like I I it's interesting because like I know that with Alex for instance and I keep bringing I keep bringing up my fiance because his show because their understudies are like so like they yeah, have they're tight as hell. I'm like, I want to be in their friend group. They look fun. (laughs) I know, I know. And they had like a whole like photo shoot and they like used our apartment to like do the makeup and all of that. Like it was there. They are, are very, very close. And it's funny because they don't have a dressing room. Mm -hmm. So where they are in all of their live videos and all of their stuff on Instagram is technically under the stage, like where the orchestra would be. Okay. Um, like that is where they are. And it's because they just like pressed to have that space. Like there mm-hmm. actually wasn't a place for them to like be, yeah. <laughs> which, you know, which, which connects to the issue of, you know, the Broadway not actually treating their swings the way they should. Yeah. Um, because I remember when he came back and he told me, he came home and he was like, yeah, we don't really have a space to be. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was I know. like, you where are you supposed to be like just stand like I don't understand like you're just in the green room with with everyone else like with like all of the the orchestra and like right next to stage management like you have nowhere to be um so I don't know I don't know it's wild yeah maybe there is or maybe it's just like our dressing rooms but but the thing that I I keep hanging on to is just like there is going to be at least one other person. <laughs> like there'll be at least one other person that's like sitting next to me yeah. during this process in, in um in the Nederlander. It's just like I, I and I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever like get I mean, I'm sure eventually I will because I never actually went on. So I've I've actually never been in Shucked before. Um, <laughs> I just I know it, but I've never. Yeah. Uh, they actually, you know what? They let me. They let me go on stage um, in closing, like in a group scene, and they let me like sing oh, back awesome. up, like in my. It was very very sweet. Um, the dance captain asked 
if I could do it. And then he was like, if you want to, and I was like, that's lovely. So I, I have been on, I have been on the stage, yeah. but I have never, I, I don't know what that feeling will feel like of like, mm. Am I still going to feel separate from everyone? Is it going to not feel so separate once I actually get to like do the show? Yeah. Like, I don't know. And it's just, it's like uncharted territory and it's just odd. This whole thing seems like it's on un- uncharted territory. <laughs> so it's, so it's like that, that's like, I mean, that would fill me with anxiety and like, of just being like, I don't know what to expect, but you know, all we can hope is that it's like a shove with love. Tell me, where, like, tell me where I gotta go. <laughs> I will do my damnedest to make it look like everything yeah. is happening according to plan. Like, and you're such a yeah. pro. Like, it's it will all fall into place. But that feeling of of that unknown territory, territory, like you said, like that's so valid. Like, I I think I would feel exactly the same. I think I'd feel right yeah. there with you. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's also something that I, that I've been thinking about too, because like we have new people like Mm -hmm. joining our our cast and, and new people. I know that a couple of those people have done, I mean, this show has been alive for over a decade because that's what happens when you put on a new Broadway show. It's obviously done, been through all of the, the pre-Broadway runs, but um, we have a couple of people that are joining that have already been a part of it in some capacity but we also have some people that are brand new that are coming in that are covers or whatever and so I'm thinking about it in that way because I know for a fact someone (laughs) actually I don't think they even know that they've booked it yet but I know Um, (laughs) I love that that's awesome there's yeah there's someone that I know that I've worked with um that is getting an offer for the show that's Um, so cool and it's and and they have never been a swing either Mm-hmm. And so it's funny because I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, all right, so this person is coming in. I know them. And so I'm also kind of trying to be like, how do I make them not feel lonely? <laughs> like, like, what can I do to be like, yeah. okay, we're, we're at least we're together. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, uh, there, there was that like trauma bond of being in Utah in like the <laughs> freezing cold <laughs> for like eight weeks that we when all you post, I remember you and posted so- something with the snow and I went. It's only like October. Why is it snowing? <laughs> like, I got so mad. I, I was know, like, so that sucks. I, every, everyone got mad. I actually got like four responses from my friends to that to that story. And all of them said, ew. And I was like, <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I was like, I'm walking to the theater and there's literally snow hitting my face right now. It's, it's wild. I don't know if that feeling of not being a part of the onstage company or, or that loneliness of like quite literally an outsider coming into the town, because like, I just, that's keep feeling that, like, I don't know if that'll ever go away. Like Mm -hmm. maybe it will. Um, the more that I, like once I'm actually in the show or, I don't know. So it's just like, it's all of it is, it's just, it's just interesting. And, and loneliness is definitely the feeling that is attached to it because Mm. it's something that I've never, I've never done any of this before. Like it almost feels like I've never even been. And I, I mean, obviously I've been in the industry, but it almost doesn't even feel like I have been. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a new Broadway show. It's a Broadway show. It's rehearsing and performing in New York, which I've never done it's being a swing which I've never done it's even even like the role the type it's a country musical Mm -hmm. which is different too it's the fact that like I'm understudying another thing that that is it feels weird is I'm understudying like one of the names of our show like 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 understudying Alex Newell is no small feat like that's not that's no joke that is that is like understanding that when you go on stage and, and I, every time I say this, I feel a little bad, but I stand by it. Cause I think about it and I'm like, no, it's true. Cause you know, sometimes people come see shows and they see that the swing is on. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, sometimes they're upset. They're like, they're Ugh. Upset. It's Which, like yeah. We're and all I'm professionals like, like, here. <laughs> right. And, and I, I had a moment where I was just like that. I know for a fact that when I debut as that track, there's going to be at least one person in the audience that's pissed <laughs> that I'm on. And, and that is the thing, like, obviously they'll get over it, whatever, what can I do? Yeah. But 
it's it that is also new like yeah. all of it it's just there's just newness newness is scary and newness feels lonely sometimes like because and nobody has the exact same experience as you so like yeah it's rough absolutely people are gonna come see the show mm -hmm. maybe to see alex <laughs> like yeah like that's that's Valid. you know they're great yeah and so it's just it's like taking that on as well. And, and I think it's interesting um, because like I said, like new experiences can feel lonely um, because no one's living the exact same mm -hmm. life as you. And I just think it's interesting because like I've been on stage performing in some capacity since I was seven years old, I'm 31. And I'm like, the fact that we can still find so many new things mm -hmm. <laughs> in one experience yeah. in an industry that I have literally at this point, if I open, if it'll happen, we will open <laughs> um, when, when the Broadway show open at this point, I guess I will have done like every type of performing that yeah. you can do professional like theme parks and cruise lines and tours and all of the things. And it's like the fact that you can find so many new things, like I can name at least six new things about this contract. And I think that's that's wild. Like you will, you will always find something that is individual and you will, I, I, and I don't necessarily think that loneliness is like a bad thing either. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure you've explored, I'm sure if you haven't, you will explore that loneliness is not inherently bad. It's yeah. just like, yeah, it's just like a thing that you're just like, well, this is how I'm feeling. And like, I know that other people are feeling this way. That's kind of like, why my Instagram is the way my Instagram is. <laughs> yeah. I sometimes I'm really just like, this is a thing I'm dealing with and maybe I'm oversharing, but I'm not seeing anyone else talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it because I know someone else feels this way. <laughs> that's why, I mean, Hey, that's why I literally started this podcast because yeah, I was just like, why do we, at least for me personally, I was like, I feel shame in telling people that I'm lonely. I mean, I've been lonely in so many different aspects of my life, probably forever. But like this year in particular with Gabe being on tour, I was like feeling like, oh yeah, I'm lonely, but I feel like I'm not allowed to express that I'm lonely because number one, after his crazy medical incident that happened, he's alive. Number two, He's yeah. working with Moulin Rouge and that's like the dream contract. So I have to just be proud of him. Number three, like I have a, 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 I have a home that like, I feel very good in and it's got accessibility to the places that I need to go. Like I have all these riches around me. So like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's like, no, right? all of these can exist and still feel extremely isolating. And you can feel so alone in a room of a hundred people because you're the only one in your mind. And sometimes yeah. we're really mean to ourselves. I know you talk about it a lot on your Instagram of like the negative self-talk and how, you know, we have to, we have to be our biggest cheerleaders. And it's really, really hard to do that on the days where loneliness creeps in and, and doesn't have a positive thing to offer that day. I do think loneliness can really lead to like, I consider like loneliness and solitude. It, I feel like it goes like on the, on a spectrum of like negative to positive. And I might just, I might disagree with this in five minutes, but like, <laughs> I feel like there's isolation, which feels dark and cold. And then there's loneliness, which is just like, could go either way. And then there's solitude, which is like, pe feels peaceful and full of light. So like, and there's that spectrum of like, where do I land today? Because we need to be alone with ourselves to, to be able to go, I don't need to be codependent with someone else to know that I'm strong enough to handle this. Or like, yeah. I can, I can work through this and I can find a new part of myself that I didn't even know was that kick ass. And, um, or I didn't know like, okay, that's truly a limit that that's cool that I can't do it, or I don't want to do it, or it's not my thing. And so yeah. finding, finding that balance of, of letting yourself explore, like when it's, positive or dark or light like we need all of those to be a full human being and but it, it it's hard to number one, I feel like it's hard to put words to it sometimes it's just that like ugh kind of feeling where you're like what the fuck is this today <laughs> like what am yeah. I feeling <laughs> yeah and I think I think that like the loneliness too is like 
like you said, I mean, it teaches you a lot about yourself and it, and like that thing that you said, you know, that sometimes there's things that you're, you were experiencing and you're like, okay, actually I'm good on that. I, I don't, I know that that's not for me. Like that's something huge that I like started at the very beginning of this year is I, I was doing a contract in Florida and um, <laughs> the people that I met were lovely. I have some of, some of my very close friends that I met doing that contract, but it was yeah. a horrible contract. It was the <laughs> worst contract I've ever worked. It oh, no. literally, it was horrible. Um, and I, I literally only stayed there because I needed to get my health insurance back. And that's the way that things work. Um, but I, yeah. I needed, I needed to get my health insurance back and I was like, okay, I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to do this thing. Um, but the thing is, is that contract solidified in my brain that I will not be auditioning for a single thing mm -hmm. that takes me out of New York city, mm -hmm. because I had a moment where I was like, these things, um, these things are, are hard to deal with just like the industry in general. Yeah. When it comes to safety, when it comes to accessibility, when it comes to diversity, like all of the things, these are all things that we are continuously working on and dealing with and hopefully will become smaller issues as you yeah. know, time goes on. But like, I would rather deal with those issues and then get to go home mm -hmm. to my home and my space and my partner and my dog, mm -hmm. as opposed to being hours away, a plane ride away to people that uh, as lovely as they may be, I've only known for like a week. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, that is so isolating and, and, and not, not good because yeah. you're just kind of like, I don't even know how to, like, I don't know how to process these negative feelings because I'm around a bunch of people that don't know me at all. Yeah. Um, and I just kind of got to this point where I was like, I'm never doing it ever again. And my agent had to like, get on the phone with me and talk to me about auditioning for shucks and like because they have the the out of town free yeah. broadway thing and i was like i'm not leaving i was like do not send me out for a, a tour i'm not doing it i was like i've toured already yeah i've done the regional theater thing and i was like honestly at this point i would rather just like work in new york you know at like the jobs that i have that are fulfilling to me because i've set that up i have the boundaries of the things i want to do to make money when i'm not performing i'm like i, I like that i'm not yeah. like trudging to a restaurant front like I've gotten to a point after what like seven almost eight years of living in New York where I know what I want to do and what I don't want to do and exactly that's it and so I'm like I, I I had to have a moment where I was like no I'm I, like do not submit me <laughs> for anything yeah. that is not in New York because if I'm going to experience <laughs> this sucks but if I'm going to experience trauma I want to experience <laughs> trauma and I want to come home <laughs> well, listen <laughs> Say it louder, <laughs> louder for the people in the back, because that is, that is real. Like, yeah, it's just, I, I just, you know, I just got to a moment where like, I was so lonely in, in when I doing these contracts that are when I'm like so far away and it's not just my partner, it's like, mm -hmm. it's my home in general. The comforts it's like of home. I, yeah. It's the comforts of home. It's on that. I mean, in Utah, I had my dog, but in Florida, I didn't have my dog. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so I'm not home. I don't have my dog. I don't have my partner. I don't have my friends, like the people that actually know me well. I have these people that maybe in a few months will be my friends or like yeah. we talked about maybe in a couple of weeks. But as of right now, I met you two days ago and I'm stressed and I don't like this contract and I hate that I'm in Florida. <laughs> and like yeah. all of this and all of this stuff is happening. And so I think that that loneliness connected to like, okay, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. And I think that yeah. I'm at a point where I, I can respect myself enough and I, I trust my career and mm. my, and my talent and how I put myself out there enough to say, you know, I'm, I think I'll only, <laughs> when I sent that email to my agent, I felt crazy. I was like, please only submit me for Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I was like, speaking into existence. I, yeah. Yeah. I was like, please only submit me for Broadway and off Broadway. And that is it like that I'm done with everything else. And it, I quite literally, like I had to have like a come to Jesus moment with myself where I was like, no, I think legitimately, no matter how much I love theater and performing, I also love like my peace yeah. and I love my, my life that I've created. I'm not 23 anymore. Like this is my life. My life yes. is not just about 
jumping from gig to gig to gig anymore. And so I'm just like, you know, I think it's just, it's like Broadway or, or off Broadway or bust for me yeah. because I've done all of the other things, you know? Yeah. So, and I think yeah, that's I think valid that, because like what we've all gone through and can, and people are still going through with this pandemic that who knows when, or if it will ever actually end. Um, <laughs> it's sad. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, we, we went through hell collectively I'm experiencing experiencing it in in gig life we went through something collectively that helped people go no my my peace is very important and money I can find money elsewhere I can find that elsewhere because despite how scary it is like there there can be money to be found there they can, there can be ways to pay the bills that bring yeah. me peace and like and and it's frightening to like especially as an actor when you're put when you have this whole mentality put in that like you will be starving unless you're famous and it's just not true but it's so hard to unlearn that especially when like the powers that be and everyone who's not even in the industry says it so you believe yeah. it and then like you know when you're able to get I'm still working on it but I feel like I'm getting closer to like where you're at with that where it's just like no like I'm I no, <laughs> I don't want, <laughs> I don't want that. And I think that that's okay. Like whenever I say, when people are like, oh, why wouldn't you audition for this? I'm like, because I don't, I used to go to the every single audition that I could like sign my name on an unofficial list for. And I'm like, I'm yeah. not doing that anymore. I know I'm not going to be tap dancing in 42nd street. I'm not wasting my fucking time. I'm like, I'm not yeah. doing it girl. Like I'm just no. not. And I, and I think that it's, it's, yeah, especially with like the thing that, that you said about, um, about like them, like you could, there's other ways to make money or like, you know, the money will come. It's so funny because I, I obviously I'm very, I was, I'm very blessed and lucky to have a fiance that has been consistently working on Broadway for many years. Like that is great. I look at that and I, I will say, I'm just, I'm I'm always like, you better better fucking go. (laughs) I I rewatch this. I'm just like, I'm like. I love watching your videos. <laughs> it's it's wild. It's wild. And I and it's and it's funny because I look at it and I and I recognize the fact that if I did not have mm-hmm. this partner, I don't think that I would be able to as freely just like take only the gigs that I wanted to take because yeah. you know I, you know, it's, if I was also, you know, if I was in a relationship with someone who was struggling and not, you know, booking things and didn't have like, what, like the highest corporate theater game yeah. you can get, like, if, if, if he didn't have that, I wouldn't have that freedom. But I had a moment at the beginning of this year where I was like, I'm never, I'm never working at a restaurant again. Like I'm, I'm never doing that. Like I did it. And I was, I think I was working at this really lovely little restaurant in uh Greenwich Village and it mm-hmm. was very sweet it was very nice I was making more money there as like a maitre d than I was even like working that gig in Florida I was talking about like I was making really good money yeah but it was like a grueling schedule yeah and I was the only maitre d that existed in the company like I, it was a very small team oh my gosh so I could never call out I could yeah. never call out I could ask off so it was just it was too much and I got to a point where I was like you know what I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I was like the restaurant Valid. done. I'm going to do other things. I'm going to be a freelancer. I'm going to nanny. I'm going to coach yeah. people. I'm going like, I'm just going to have to make, just make a leap of faith and just do it. And I think yeah. that this year, it's so funny talking about all of this. It's so funny. We're doing this on the last Friday of 2022. I know. I saw um, you post that. I went, shit. Come on now. Yeah, because and it's so interesting because as I'm talking about all of this, I'm just like this year for me was the year that I told my agent only submit me for Broadway. Mm-hmm. This was the year that I was like I'm never working at a restaurant again. Like it was this I don't know what it was, but it, maybe it was the bad contract that I worked. Like maybe that's what it was because it was so deeply terrible <laughs> that I that After I After this recording, it, I need to hear more about this off off Yeah, yeah, off yeah. <laughs> I think that it like deeply, it shifted something that was like, these are things that you're experiencing that maybe you've experienced before, but they're actually like not okay for you anymore. Like you're done with them. And, and I'm realizing now talking about this, that this year was the year that I just decided, 
you know, I guess if you sum it up, you can make it sound really nice and be like, well, in 2022, Mickey said, only submit me for Broadway shows and I'm never working at a restaurant again. And then Mickey booked a Broadway show and was the manager of a dance studio. Like that is what happened. Yeah. It wasn't all pretty. It wasn't all pretty. I didn't get rich from this job, but I was rich in like emotional health. (laughs) Rich, (laughs) rich. Absolutely. I was, I didn't hate going to work every day. Like I, I enjoyed being there. I liked doing things. I liked doing the thing that made me money outside of performing, which I had never really experienced before. Yeah. Um, That's so so nice. That is, that, that is richness right there. That is a richness right there. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, yeah, maybe sometimes, you know, we found out my fiance show, you know, was closing and it was just like, okay, well, I guess we're going to eat rice and beans. Like, I guess we're going to do some, some crock pot meals from the dollar tree. I don't know. (laughs) And we'll save them and we'll freeze them and we'll make it work. And it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, once you like, you know, I, and I, and connecting it back to loneliness is, is, is something that like, you experience these things and it teaches you something about yourself Mm -hmm. and it's like up to you like whether you're going to listen to it or not like sure sometimes being lonely is just a part of life and that's just a thing but sometimes being lonely is closely connected to the isolation thing and then it gets Mm -hmm. into icky territory and you have to be like you know what I'm going to make a shift because like maybe I've felt this before but like I don't ever want to feel it ever again so like let's shift it I love that that it's like it's like a recalling to a time that we just allowed ourselves to feel that it can be like, I guess the ick is normal, but yeah. now with like experience and resilience is like, no, we don't have to feel this ache anymore. I love that. I love yeah. that. That's like that, that, that could be the benefit of loneliness that it's like knocking on your door. It's like that TikTok of like, bear, 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 bear. It's like, <laughs> like shifts. <laughs> This is a very, this is a, it's a very visual podcast, clearly, you know. I was going to say that TikTok trend that I feel like was like last week, but it was definitely like two years ago, almost, (laughs) or maybe it was a year ago. I don't know, but I feel like it was a minute ago. (laughs) Was it that Um, one? But yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. It was like a transition and the other person was on the other side looking different and was like, who's not going to. Time is an illusion. I don't even know. I'm I'm a geriatric on TikTok. I'm like, how does one talk in the tick? Like, I really have a hard time. <laughs> Truly, I'm like, I can't. I think I've started crying before. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Honestly, TikTok is uh, TikTok has made me feel younger uh, <sighs> because I did because I started looking, just watching them, not making them really, but just like watching them height of the pandemic, and I was like <laughs> very very addicted to TikTok. Like TikTok was my thing. Yeah. And so now I'm just like, oh, I know what the kids are talking about because I'm on TikTok. <laughs> also, one of my best friends is literally 23 years old um, that I met doing the doing the contract in Florida. And so I, <laughs> and I'm sure they will listen to this because they are ride or die. Shout out oh. to you, Sophia. Um, <gasps> Sophia, we but I love you. I love them. Yeah, yeah, they're all over my Instagram. Um, I love them very much, but it's funny <laughs> because they, I'll, I'll be hanging out with them, and I'm like, I don't feel like I'm 31. I feel like maybe I'm like 25. Like, I don't know. Um, Come on now. But yeah, yeah. My yeah. knees wish they felt like they were 25. I'm sitting here in this chair, this one of these like gamer chairs, and I'm not a gamer because it has so many pillows, and I keep shifting because I'm bisexual and cannot you- stop moving. <laughs> when you move to the side I was like that is a full-on gamer chair oh have. yeah oh yeah um, <laughs> I am not a gamer I downloaded maybe two games and I'm like maybe you should try this I'm like stop it you're ADHD you will not get anything done <laughs> nothing um yeah but you know that's I think that's that's what I have to say about loneliness you yeah. know that's that's the it's the thing it's it's a it teaches you a lot of stuff you know, and, and I, I'm going into a new season of, you know, more things that are probably going to make me lonely. But I think the point of it is just like listening to it. And I'm like, Mm. is this loneliness something that is beneficial to me? Is it just a feeling? Because that's okay too. Is it just, it doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be good. It could just be feeling. Yeah. Um, Well, going off of that, like the, the question, it doesn't feel clunky to ask. So I'm going to ask it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So as I asked so many of my guests, you know, because my wonderful friend, Andrew, who I feel like you would love and I feel like I would love to connect you to because 
just a yeah. dear soul and I feel like you'd love him um that it's like one time he when I was starting to go through this like being physically alone yeah. in my home he asked me he was like he's like what what story do you think your loneliness is trying to tell you and so that's the question has stuck with me truly for all of 2022 and so I'd love to ask you if you feel comfortable answering it like in this mm-hmm. in this moment right now or her up, however what do you think your lone like what story is your loneliness trying to tell you I think I think it's telling me that I'm capable of more than I think I am mm. um and that I need to like trust tr- like trust myself like because I think that a lot of the loneliness that I've experienced as of late and I'll I'll even include like last contract in Florida the beginning of this year all of that a lot of that loneliness is coming from uncertainty is coming from being in a new space feeling new feelings and like that that feeling of like oh i don't i don't know what tomorrow was going to bring How, is anybody else feeling the way i'm feeling and i think it's just like first of all not worrying about what other people are feeling because that is none of my business and some of them may not even know <laughs> what they're feeling yeah. you know so i just feel like the story it's telling me is just like to listen to myself and like trust myself mm. and pay attention to like what these situations are trying to tell me because that is going to propel me into like an even better season of my life an even better situation um that I can just get from sitting in loneliness and being like what is what is this feeling what is it for you know yeah. so that's that's what I think I love that thank you so yeah. much Mickey where can people find you where can they follow yes. you tell us everything Yes, you can find me on Instagram. Um, on Instagram, I'm just Mickey Abraham with an underscore at the end because somebody is just Mickey Abraham on Instagram. It's not me. <laughs> so, so Mickey, Mickey Abraham, Abraham, get, Abraham, other Mickey Abraham, get out of here. Oh, live, live, live your life, but just change it up. <laughs> just change your name. Just like put a dash in the middle or something. Yeah. Um, no, but I am, I'm on Instagram. I, um, you know, I'm uh, a coach as well for artists mm-hmm. and creatives and fantastic all coach. Of my- yeah thank you it's 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 fun it's that is see that's the next thing like the next thing is you know when I'm not performing fully my entire income is from coaching and and teaching and doing that whole thing so that's like the next step we'll see how I'm doing with that um at this time next year um but but yeah uh I'm all, all the links to work with me and find out about what I do is on my Instagram um so yeah follow me on Instagram I'm not on any other social media. So there you go. (laughs) Nice and easy. We love that. Well, Mickey, thank you so much for coming on. Feel free to come back any other time that you're feeling lonely because you know, I'm, I'm always down to talk. Come on now. Good luck in the show. Can't wait to see. I can't wait to see you and cheer for you. Thank you so much to tuning into this installment of, Oh, I'm lonely. I hope you feel a little more connected than you did before. Today's episode was produced, hosted and edited by yours truly. Check me out on social media if you want, at Emily Martinez Official on Instagram and Emily Martinez Entertainer on YouTube. But most importantly, it would help us out greatly if you could download, rate, and leave a gorgeous BB comment on our page. You can literally rate the show every single time you open up the Apple Podcast app. So if you could do that, that would be splendid. Because I would really love to help more lovely, lonely human beings feel a little less, well, alone out there. Until next time, my friends.